Look around. You can find cars like these on Auto Trader. New cars, used cars, electric cars, maybe even flying cars. Okay, no flying cars, but as soon as they get invented, they'll be on Auto Trader. Just you wait. Auto Trader. Have you or a loved one been injured in an accident? Are you struggling to recover fair compensation? Look no further. At Phillips Law Firm, the experienced personal injury attorneys will fight for your rights and get you the justice and compensation you deserve. They handle a wide range of cases, including car accidents, slip and falls, medical malpractice, and workplace injuries. Justice is a phone call away, so don't wait. Call today for a free case review. Call 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com. Now, the greatest story never told with Miles and Thrill. Oh, we're back! Welcome to uh, episode number 77 of the Greatest Story Never Told podcast. What a, uh, what a show, what a show. Uh, let's see here. Uh, by the way, I'm not sure if we have an official sponsor of the podcast, but as always, if you'd like to be an unofficial sponsor, just please do us a favor. And uh, gen- uh, donate whatever you can to the three local uh, Fisher Houses. If you can be generous, that would be fantastic. Uh, keep in mind, if you go to fisherhouse.org, that is the national uh, site. So we would prefer if you could make a donation locally to one of the three local Fisher Houses here in the uh, Seattle area. And with that, we'll make you an unofficial sponsor. Now, we start with an uh, email. And a greatest story never told request. Request? request. Oh, are we taking requests now? Yeah, we are taking requests. All right. I uh, and if you have a request, just uh, shoot us an email to the uh, to the men's room at uh, KISW.com. We'll try to, to, to see if we can do it. I'm not sure we can do this one or not. But it says, Ola, guys, I've been loving uh, binging on your podcast. Keeps me entertained during the long car rides during my work travels. I really enjoy when you guys play clips of old interviews that you conducted both here in Seattle uh, and in your Baltimore days. Uh, man, what happened to your voices, by the way? And I was hoping to make a request. <laughs> Cigarettes. Hey, yes, come on, you know this, Nick knack During one of your shows a while back, Frank Sinatra Jr. came up. Both Miles and Ted remembered having him on the show a long time ago, but Thrill had no recollection. None. Miles informed Thrill that not only was Frank Jr. on the program, but Thrill said to him, according to Miles, the single most offensive thing he'd ever heard one human say to another. I don't know what, I don't remember, I don't remember talking to the guy. Thrill didn't remember that either. Uh, but he also didn't doubt it. Uh, is it possible to dig up this old interview to play for Thrill's loyal legion of fans? Or at the very least, can you please let us know uh, what it is he said? Rock can you on let bitches. me know what it yeah. is I said? Nick Knack, uh, if we had access to any of those old uh, files, we have a few, a handful. You might have a box. I, might, I think I brought Still? the whole box. So I had a box in my garage for years. And then when we started doing this, I dug it up. Uh, I believe I brought all of them and then they're sitting by the desk. We have a few. So we can dig through that yeah. and see, maybe. We have a few that we haven't played. Maybe we'll get to those uh, coming up. Uh, let's see. Uh, today we're, we're finding out uh, more and more about all the shows that are going to be coming around the area. I know I heard Ryan Castle say today on his show, the Guns N' Roses is going to play down in, uh, in Portland, Oregon. Uh, they've also got a couple dates in Atlantic City. Uh, so why are they doing that? I know that there was a mention of Billy Idol. Maybe we were going to go down to Vegas and check out Vi- uh, Billy Idol. was playing like a residency down there for a month or so. We plan on going, yeah. Uh, but a lot of a lot of cool stuff going on. Also, I know that the festivals are picking back up. Uh, Metallica's going to play whatever the 98 Rock Festival is down in uh, Sacramento. Mm-hmm. They're a big rock festival. Uh, Castle's trying to get us down there for a, a day. Good. Yeah. They would, do it right, man. I mean, they, they load yeah. up. that. Uh, and, it, it's amazing. And uh, so um, today we're going to talk about uh, the onstage announcement, which might sound like a very cool thing to do. Mike, don't, don't, uh, this was your idea. Right. You this said was, you wanted Mike us said, to talk hey, about man. stage yeah, announcements back in the day. Because you're regretting it. Yeah. So yeah. I've got some good ones. I'll start out with a couple here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, okay, there was a uh, amphitheater in Baltimore on the water. I believe it was called Pier 6 Amphitheater. It is, in fact, Pier 6. And I used to do a lot of stage announcements down there. Now, Because it was all old people bands. It was. It, I was working for a classic rock station, so it was Crosby, Stills, and Doobies, Nash, all that kind of thing. Doobie Brothers, Steve Miller. If you like Yacht yeah. Rock, actually, it, yeah. honest to God, Pier 6 in Baltimore, if you like Yacht Rock or Gospel, it, that place all summer... Mm-hmm. It has your name. And prog rock. They would bring in like jo- uh, Jethro Tull or Yes or one of those bands. Yes? Or, really? Yeah, yeah, one of those bands would come in and play. I know Asia played there one night. Wow. Did a stage announcement for Asia. <laughs> did you, did wow. you say the wrong continent? <laughs> no, Ladies and gentlemen, Africa. Europe. Yeah, right. oh, sorry, sorry, Asia. My bad. We're leaving together. <laughs> uh, wrong band. Anyway, so um, I'm pretty sure I was doing a morning show uh, with a gal who used to do uh, actually mornings here in uh, Seattle. Oh, Whitney. Uh, Whitney. She went by Red on the, uh, on, the, on the radio here when she worked at the end and did mornings. 
I think she's on to something else like Spotify or I can't remember. I think it's Spotify. But either way, we're doing a morning show and we're bringing out the Doobie Brothers. Now, Whitney had this great idea. She would go up on the microphone and she would say something really, really funny. And then she would hand the microphone to me and I would bring out the Doobie Brothers. So what happens? The place is packed. All right. It really is. I swear to God, it's Baltimore. They love themselves some Doobie Brothers. So we get up there and make the stage announcement, and I go, ladies and gentlemen, and that's when Whitney decided to grab my pants and rip them off. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> keep in mind, there's thousands of people out there. I am standing on stage, and I look down, and I mean, she took it all off. But I still have to announce the band. Right. So I'm like, I look down, my dick's hanging out. <laughs> I'm on stage in front of thousands of people. I really did not care, to be honest with you, because right. I was drunk enough where it didn't matter. So I was like, all right, ladies and gentlemen, here are the Doobie Brothers. <laughs> right. And then I waddled off stage <laughs> with my butt hanging out. You know what I mean? And people thought that was great. They loved it. And the band's just shaking their head. They of came Because they're looking at my dick <laughs> as, I'm, as I'm waddling off stage. And they're the Doobie Brothers. They were the Man, Doobie Brothers. So we deserve better than this. Yeah, but... Uh, I could not walk around the amphitheater after that without someone stopping me and going, hey, nice dick. Right. <laughs> that was great. Like, I wanted to see that. I'm like, do you really think that was my idea? Whitney thought I was hysterical. Of course. She loved it. She thought that was funnier than hell. Oh, Luckily, yeah. I've never, I only bombed. It was a local band. Ted and I did this announcement. We are drinking with firefighters at a bar in Tacoma. And we had a great time. But the reason, quote unquote, we're supposed to be there is to introduce this band. All right. So. We meet the guys in the band. They're very, very nice. I don't know who told me this or why I had it in my head, that they were an Alice in Chains cover band. All right? So no big deal. Whatever. But at the time we go up to make this announcement, I'm trying to throw them some love talking about what an outstanding job they do of covering Alice in Chains and blah, 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 blah. Not a lot of people have the guts to cover like Seattle bands and you live in Seattle. And Ted, we're on stage. Ted whispers in my ear like, they're not an Alice in Chains cover band. <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh, like no. 45 seconds deep into this And I look at the band And they're looking at me like What are you talking about? And I'm like But they're not playing tonight Who we do have is Whatever the band was and, and I just felt stupid Because Ted's like I didn't know what you were talking about I'm like Why didn't you stop me? He's like I didn't know where you were going man So yeah Just felt stupid But that, that's the only bad one I've had And that's only on a local level On the national level I've done all right. You get a little nervous, although the one thing I will say, and this drives me goddamn crazy with some of these bands, of course they have rules, don't touch this microphone, don't walk up, that's fine, I get that, but you go up there and uh, the manager of the band is oh, always God. the last oh, person God. to speak, and after they're done pre-yelling at you for nothing you've done, every once in a while they drop this one nugget, and it's like one out of every five times. Okay, when you introduce the band, don't say... Uh, Right now, or just say coming up. Like, dude, if there is a 20-minute gap between the time we go on stage to announce a band, like, people get mad at us, not the band, but, you, but there's yeah. nothing you no, can do. You feel like, really Ladies and gentlemen, no, corn no. in and you, 20 minutes. Look, this is an ad. The difference is it's about AT&T's deal on the incredible new iPhone 15 Pro. And it's real. Guaranteed. That's not always the case with other ads. The view of a lifetime. Only with a pricey upgrade. Flavor you'll never forget. You will. Save on the latest trends. If you pay for a membership. Shoes that'll make you fly. They won't. A drive unlike any other. If it's your first time driving it. Breathe in to find inner peace. Then pay extra to remove the ads. At AT AT&T, we mean what we say. Everyone gets our best iPhone deals, guaranteed. Learn how to get iPhone 15 Pro with titanium on us with eligible trade-in. Connecting changes everything. AT&T. See att.com slash iPhone for details about the guaranteed trade-in promo for new and existing customers. Available for a limited time. Terms and restrictions apply. And you think it would be cool back there. It's just not. No. The backstage area, it's, it's, a it's a very busy area, man. People are just, you know, the, all, all the guys who are working behind the scenes are busting their ass. And typically we do shows that are more than one band. So mm-hmm. there's a lot of different gear back there. A lot of people running around. And they don't have time for you, you know, messing up. Or <laughs> there, There's no food directly backstage. There's a separate catering area. So it's not like there's a party going on backstage. It's a strictly business area. Area. I was doing there was a um, uh, there was a, a show at Pimlico Racetrack, and it was called the Harley Davidson Festival, and it was one of the festivals that 
Uh, probably like, I don't know, uh, late 90s. Kind of started out as a one-off, but it was mm-hmm. in Baltimore. And I've, I've told this story before, but not all of the story. So Bob Dylan, he is uh, he's getting ready to go up on stage. I'm going to bring out Bob Dylan. There's quite a number of people out in this crowd. I mean, it's, it's, t- it's 10,000 easy. You know what I mean? It's a sea of people. And just like Steve says, I'm standing on the side. And Bob's not really in a hurry. This is a one-off festival, but it's really not like, Bob Dylan, not in a hurry. It's not really a traveling festival, so these guys have never really played together on the same bill. You know what I mean? Like when ah. Lollapalooza used to go around, all these bands knew each other. Sure, they sure. traveled together. This is a one-off festival, so you have a certain amount of set time you need to play. You need to be on time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, as you say, there's this big lag between the last band that played and where's Bob Dylan? So I'm standing on the side of the stage, standing on the side. You know what's your function? All the sh. Do you get from the all every the, time all the people who just you know they want to like what do you think it, it is? I, you know why I'm here? You know what I mean? I've told you ten times. So this guy like basically corners me. He goes, look. He goes, if you go up on stage, you go, hey, 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 I'm gonna kill you. He's like, <laughs> so all right. Anyway, so I gotta do this. I gotta do the stage. And I'm like, I'm not doing that, man. I'm, I'm gonna get up there, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, very pleased to announce, you know, Rock and Roll Hall of Famer, legendary Bob Dylan. Smattering of applause. He goes up there. He's got a full length, like. It was an alligator. Alligator. Trench coat I mean, it's, you got to remember, this is summer in Baltimore. This is yeah. August. It is It is 103 degrees. He quickly sheds that. Anyway, so my next thing is I've got to wait for Bob Dylan to be done, and then I'm going to bring out Billy Idol. So Bob Dylan's supposed to play for an hour and 15 minutes. All right. So at, at the point at the marker, I'm supposed to be back there. I'm supposed to be back there 15 minutes before he's done. Okay. So that I can bring out the next band because Billy Idol is going to be next. So Bob's doing his thing, you know, and I can't even, he, I don't even know what the hell he was playing. He wasn't even playing anything. Like he didn't even close the show with the song, you know. Whatever. Right. Anyway. So Bob's running late now. He decides he's going to play longer. And I'm standing there and, and Billy Idol's standing there and Billy's got red leather on. He's got red leather. He'll, trust me, within two That's minutes, all these clothes are coming off. But right now, it's Billy Idol and his guitarist, Steve Stevens, and there's another guy standing there. And, and Billy's like, and I, we're going to have to bleep this, but I'm just going to, this is how Billy Idol talks. Hey, what the fuck, man? Is he ever going to get done? He's supposed to be done like 15 minutes ago. This fucking sucks. He sucks. He's like, who likes this shit? <laughs> and he's telling me this. I'm like, Billy, I'm going to try to get you out there as fast as I can. He's like, yeah, man, make it fast because we just want to play tunes, man. We don't, who wants to listen to this shit? And I'm just like, he's just sitting there bashing. And I, I, I am not in disagreement with him. Right, this right, is right. It's a boring ass set. Like, he could come out there and fart on stage and be more exciting <laughs> right. than Bob said. It's honest to God. So Billy's just like, fing hey, Christ, man. Like, Jesus Christ. Like, I never liked Bob Dylan. He sucks. You know what I mean? I'm like, yeah, I'm kind of right with you. Like, yeah. Either. But anyway, he kept playing and playing and playing. So finally, Billy's like, F- this. I'm going to go get drunk. <laughs> so, <laughs> he leaves. He leaves. And like, as soon as he walks down the steps, like Bob Dylan's done. Of course. Of Billy's course. gone. Now Billy's gone. And he comes back, you know, about like five, ten minutes later. He got there in plenty of time. He's like licking his lips. He's like, F- man, I just couldn't take listening to that shit. <laughs> so that was that was pretty entertaining. Then I get to go out there, and he's like, you know, he's, then, and then when I go like, all right, man, I'm going to do this. He's like, yeah, man, rock and roll. Pats me on the shoulders. I'm like, Fuck yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? he's that guy yeah, though, he's man. That guy. So that was, and I'm drinking a beer back there. I didn't give a shit. Yeah. But uh, that was a good one. Godsmack, as you said, when we did that one for, we weren't allowed to get on a certain microphone because it was Sully's, and I didn't know that. So I get up there to introduce the band. I swear to God, it goes like this. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> right? And we're like, I didn't like. I'm talking just like I am to you now. But like when I talked on this, it's like, welcome to the God of Hellfire. It was like, oh God, this microphone is really compressed. Because when you talk you to Sully, I mean? it's just talking to a boss. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got when the you cat. In the microphone, I'm the God of Hellfire. And I didn't realize. I was like, good evening, Chinese studio. It was like, and the, and the guy's like yanking me off the microphone, like I just exposed this dirty little secret. Where did you go wrong, Mike? I went wrong on a couple different occasions. Never actually delivered it wrong, thank heaven. <clears throat> but um, the first one, it was my first shot at a, at a stage announcement, and I was going to be all by myself on this one. But Ryan uh, tossed my name into the hat because it was Five Finger Death Punch is going to be out there. He knows I'm a massive fan. He says, "Mike, you want to go do the stage announcement for for Five Finger Death Punch?" I said, "Hell yeah, let's do this thing." And it was Bad Wolves, Breaking Benjamin, and Five Finger Death Punch that were there. I that's remembered good, that's saying, a good show. That's a great show. It was yeah. a fun show. But I had to rock it out of here from the studio. I actually had to leave just a little bit early to get down to White River in time. Get down there. The guys texted me like, "Hey, get on back here. You're about to you're about to get on there, right?" I go back there and I go backstage, <clears throat> and Bad Wolves is still on the stage. 
And the way that I have memorized this is that it is Bad Wolves, and then Breaking Benjamin will come up, and then Five Finger Death Punch will close out the night. And so I'm talking to the guy, and I'm like, hey, is there any, like, advertiser that I have to talk about, or do I just go out there and say, hey, my name is Mike, thank you all for being here, here's Breaking Benjamin, because they're coming up after Bad Wolves. And he says, yep, that's perfect, except for it's, uh, it's Five Finger Death Punch that's coming up next. I said, what? <laughs> I said, oh, they're rotating the, th- th- this is one of those oh. tours where they rotate who the headliner is. So Breaking is. Benjamin's going to be the headliner. Then. Right. So I was actually down there to introduce Five Finger Death Punch, and I damn near went out there and said, all right, everybody, coming up next, we got Breaking Benjamin. And then Five Finger Death Punch would have taken the stage, and I would have looked like the biggest D on the mm-hmm. planet. I kind of wish that had happened, yeah. just so I could oh. laugh and laugh. The and thing laugh. is that it's my band. It would not be <laughs> forgivable. And then the other time uh, was, was during Pain in the Grass one year, and if you've ever believed that we you know just put on a facade that we're drinking during Pain in the Grass, that is not true at all. These guys get absolutely nine kinds of plastered backstage. And one thing that I have learned about these guys is that they are they like to pull tricks. Mostly you, Miles. Mostly you. <laughs> what? Because we have a we have a formula that we kind of do when we go out on the onto the stage for, to do the stage announcement. Usually it's either you, Miles, or Ted that comes out there and says hi to everybody. You guys are kind of the hype guys. You get everybody excited. Thrill, you usually uh, make some sort of a hello. You do the toast, toast or, or whatever that you're going to do. We have somebody that does the advertisers, and then usually I'm the one that's given the microphone to bring out the band. At the time, we were going to bring out the cult. They were coming up out, uh, <laughs> out on stage. One of my favorite bands, by the way. The cult the is great. They were great. It's a great show, too. I love the cult. But as Miles was giving down everybody's job being out there on the microphone, I knew he was going to screw with me in one capacity. <laughs> I just didn't know how it was coming. And so he said, okay, Ted, you're going to go out there. You're going to say hi. Steve, you're gonna do the uh, you're gonna do the shot. I'm gonna hit the advertisers. Then Mike, you're gonna bring out the band. Remember, it's the Cure. <laughs> like I knew it. I knew he was gonna do it. And I sat back there the entire time saying, "It's the cult. It is the cult." Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, coming up next, we've got the cult. The cult. The cult. We go out on stage, and I was a little bit too cheats to the wind to head on out there. We go out there. Everything's going according to the plan, and I am sweating bullets because I know I'm going to duff this up. <laughs> and so gives me the microphone. And, and I said, all right, ladies and gentlemen, you guys want some more? The crowd roars. It's fantastic. I said, all right, coming up next, we've got the... And as soon as that C hit my throat, <laughs> my brain said, the cure. And I said, I paused for half a second with the... Yeah. And I forced it out. <laughs> I get up. I go back to my seat because my fiance and her family are sitting out there in the crowd. I go back out there. She says, you almost said the wrong band, didn't you? <laughs> no. The C- she called me out from no. up there. Nobody else noticed it, thank heavens. But no. I have yet to screw up, other than the fact that during that Death Punch show, I never said that I was from KISW. I never introduced mm. who I was. I just said, hello, everybody. My Welcome. name is Mike. <laughs> <laughs> A bag of Brock's candy corn. Why, it must be fall. What's that sound? The rustling leaves in the autumn wind? Or a shaking bag of Brock's candy corn? Or this? Sounds like Brock's candy corn falling into an autumn-themed candy dish as part of a decorative fall tablescape to be shared with friends and family. Brock's. Make moments sweeter. Find your Brock's candy corn in the candy aisle. One more, one more, <laughs> make a wish foundation. One more, <laughs> right. one more, here's one more funny story just about how messed up we get, too. We went to the Gorge to see Velvet Revolver, and I think Allison Chains opens up the show, right? So I did... I might have done a lot of hallucinogenics. <laughs> I was rocking on the grass. I mean, I'm way at the top of the gorge, and you know how, how far that is. He had is. his shirt pulled over his knees, knees his yeah. hands like wrapped around his shins, right? And just kind of rocked. Ted I'm kept saying, hey, man, is he all right? I said, obviously he's not. I said, just I leave him alone. I he did, would get through his yeah, trip. I did two different types of hallucinogenics. Right. So now I'm just flying up there. And Ted's sitting with me, and he's like, hey, man, you want to join? And I'm like, no. And he's like, I've never seen you turn down weed before. I'm like, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. He goes, okay, hey, man. He goes, do you want to do a stage announcement? Do you want to bring out Velvet Revolver? And I was like, with him. And I was like, no, man, I don't think so. I'm good. And I look, and Ted's not there. And then I look down on the stage, and he's like, hey, everybody! And I'm like, within two seconds (laughs) from the time that Ted asked me, if I wanted to do the stage mounts, he had transformed himself down on the stage. <laughs> Time it was like two seconds, and he was down there bringing out the band. I'm like, that's cool. I'm glad I didn't do that. I never would have been able to get there. <laughs> <laughs> it was so weird. It's like he asked me that I turned back to him, and he was gone, and then he was back down on stage, which is like a mile away from where I was. Yeah, sitting. yeah. So yeah, yeah. like you have to distance. know how far I was away. It was just like, oh god. So maybe we'll get back to some live shows. Yeah. God, that'd be yeah, great. I lose the genics and booze. Yeah. All right, there you go on the uh, on the great story never told back. 
You've been listening to The Greatest Story Never Told with Miles and Thrill on Radio.com. Oh, man! A Double Flush Production.